My name's Paul Kidd. I've been living with HIV for almost 30 years now uh, and about half that period of time now with hepatitis C as well. So I was diagnosed with hep C in 99, diagnosed with, uh, with HIV uh, in the late 80s. So I was diagnosed with hep C in 1999 and it came as a, quite a surprise to me because at the time I didn't really know that I was at risk of hepatitis C. Uh, there was no, uh, the general consensus at that time was that hep C was not sexually transmitted, that it was only transmitted through direct blood contact, so particularly with injecting drug use. And so uh, in some ways the, the diagnosis of hep C was a lot harder to take than the HIV diagnosis, which I'd had, uh, you know, a decade earlier earlier because uh, I knew that I was at risk of, hep of, of HIV because I knew you know what the risk factors were but but hep C really came out of the blue so it was in some ways harder to deal with. It was hard because I had just started a new relationship uh, and uh, it was not something that we were expecting and was something we had to deal with t together. I was really lucky that my partner at the time uh, you know, was accepting of that and we, we're still together today so uh, you know, we've been able to support each other through that uh, over that period of time. I think for anyone dealing with any kind of serious medical condition, uh, support is absolutely crucial and it makes a huge difference to people's ability to survive and to do well medically, but also obviously to do well psychologically and socially uh, with, that, uh, with that condition. So hep C is no different to, uh, to HIV or to any other serious medical condition in that regard. So uh, having that support from my partner and from my family and friends has been really important to me. I wasn't treated uh, immediately when I became diagnosed, as I say, that was in 1999, and at that time the medical approach was not to treat early. Uh, so the idea of treating people during acute infection came along a little bit later than that. Uh, so at the time that I was diagnosed, the, the approach that was generally taken by the doctors was to, to wait and, uh, and treat later on. And then subsequent to that, uh, the advice I've had from my, my specialist has been that the prospects of, of success with the existing treatments is, uh, is fairly low, uh, and so that I, I should wait for better treatments to come along, particularly given that my, my liver health seems to be pretty good. It's constantly there. Uh, you know, the, the hep C is always something that you have to think about and be aware of. And in some ways it's a, it's a bit more uncertain than uh, living with HIV alone because uh, uh, certainly uh, in the last decade or so, living with HIV, we have a fairly uh, very good treatments for HIV and really clear kind of idea about what you can expect to have happen in the future. But with hep C, there's always those big question marks. You don't really know whether the disease is going to progress in your case or not, and you don't know whether the treatments are going to be effective in your case or not. So it's a lot more uncertain, uh, and that's a, a, constant, uh, a constant issue to deal with. Stigma with hep C is a real issue, I think. Uh, obviously, uh, there's that association uh, with, between hep C and injecting drug use, and obviously that's a, a transgressive behaviour and, and, and people tend to, to treat you somewhat differently on the assumption that your hep C is uh, related to drug use. But also uh, the increasing sexual stigma around hep C that seems to be appearing within the HIV-positive gay community I think is particularly troubling uh, to see those kinds of, of behaviours and people uh, talking about rejection of people with, with hepatitis C is very uh, um, hard to deal with, particularly when those are the kinds of behaviour that we've had to deal with in the past around HIV. And to see that stuff coming from HIV positive gay men uh, it's coming up around hep C is, is really disturbing. It's an ongoing process. Hep C is a new uh, a new thing for us to be dealing with as a community and we're still coming to terms with it. We're still coming to terms with working out what the prevention message is and working out uh, kind of what our response is as, as a community uh, to hep C. So it's an ongoing process and I think the most important thing is that we, d we are more open and talk about it. That stigma you know, does prevent people from being open about their hepatitis C status and from talking uh, to other positive people around, about issues around hep C and I think that's a real barrier that, that, that needs to be broken down. The most important thing for any kind of uh, response to a, a medical uh, condition is awareness and education and making people aware of what the risks are and what they can do to protect themselves and their partners.
There's also an issue around medical stigma of hepatitis C. Uh, people with hep C often report that they, they feel that they get treated differently uh, in medical situations once their hepatitis C status is known. And again, that's, I think, related to that association between injecting drug use. Uh, one of the real uh, issues that we hear about is people who are denied pain treatment in hospital because they're hepatitis C positive uh, and because there is that association and that, and that belief, rightly or wrongly, that people are uh, users of opiate drugs uh, and, and that they should be denied uh, pain relief because, uh, because uh, you know, you don't give opiates to, to opiate users. Across the board, hepatitis C is a really major problem uh, in Australia. There, there are 200 or 250,000 people in Australia living with hep C, so it really dwarfs HIV as uh, the number of people that are dealing with it. Uh, and there needs to be greater awareness that it's not always associated with injecting drug use, uh, and that in any case, even injecting drug users are, are entitled to the same kinds of treatment and respect that everybody else is in a hospital situation. I've recently started treatment for hepatitis C and I'm on one of the, the trial of a, uh, one of the newest drugs, a, co a drug called Sofosbuvir, which is an oral drug for hepatitis C and it's taken without interferon. Uh, so I'm taking Sofosbuvir plus ribavirin, uh, which means that I don't have to deal with those particularly difficult uh, physical side effects that are associated with interferon that so many people struggle with. When I was first diagnosed with hep C, the approach was not to treat the hep C because the expectation was the HIV would kill you first. And that's completely reversed now because HIV treatments have got so much better and the prognosis for people with HIV is so good now that the hep C is now the, now the priority for treatment. So uh, certainly the, uh, the kind of the focus has changed and the emphasis has changed. Uh, in terms of my treatment for HIV, the uh, hep C has meant that some HIV treatments aren't recommended. So it does narrow your choice of, of treatment drugs and it does mean you need a little bit more uh, monitoring, you do need to keep an eye on how your liver is going and it requires some lifestyle modifications to do with that, things like reducing